All right, guys, we're back. Again, we have uh, another book today. Uh, it's called The Legend of the Candy Cane, and it is written by Lori Wahlberg. Uh, so we'll get to reading that in a minute. But first, uh, I want to let everybody get a second to join on here. I don't want to get started too quick and you know not, not give people a chance to join up to uh, be here in time for the reading. So um, we're uh, partnering up today with Michigami is actually for this uh, this reading. I've had a lot of people asking uh, about where they can get the Michigummies. There's a couple options. Uh, you can get them on their website if you just look up Michigummies and order them on there. Uh, or there's a lot of select stores in Michigan uh, that do carry uh, the Michigummies. So they're they're really good. Uh, I've obviously gotten the chance now to eat them a few times, and I love gummies anyway. So uh, it works out pretty pretty perfect for me uh, being able to be partnered up with someone like that. So. Happy to have them on board and and uh, and cool and thank you for the guy for all you guys of your support of the Michigan gummies. Great time of year to eat some gummies right around the holidays for Christmas. So uh, I know all the kids out there are are wanting some gummies. So let's get on it. Let's get them some. Uh, but without further ado, we do have a candy story. Like I said, the legend of the candy cane coming up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started on. The book of the legend of the candy cane. One dreary evening in the depths of November, a stranger rode into town. He stopped his horse in front of a lonely storefront. The windows were boarded shut and the door was locked fast, but the man looked at it, smiled, and said, it'll do. All through the short gray days and long dark nights of November, the man worked. Town people could hear the faint pam, pam, pam of his hammer and the snish, snish, snish of his saw. They could smell the sweet, clean scent of new lumber and the deep, oily smell of new paint. But no one knew what the man was, know who the man was, or knew what he was doing. He's getting to work. Got a lot to do. The mayor hoped the man was a doctor to heal his illness. The young wives hoped he was a tailor to make beautiful dresses. The farmers hoped he was a traitor to exchange their grain for goods, but the children had the strongest, deepest wish of all, a wish they did not tell their parents. A deep, quiet, secret wish that none of them said out loud. No one spoke to the man. No one asked if he needed help. They just waited and watched, and wondered, and wished. Looks like everybody's got a lot of different hopes for what the man's bringing to town. But one small girl watched and wondered, waited, and wished longer than she could stand. One snowy day, she knocked at the stranger's door. Hello, she said. My name is Lucy. Do you need some help? The man smiled warmly and nodded. Then he opened the door and Lucy stepped inside. A long corner ran down the side of the room. Bare shelves filled the opposite walls. In the back, there were dozens and dozens of barrels and crates. Could you help me unpack? The man asked. Looks like he's got the shop. Looking pretty good. Got to get her set up now. Lucy's heart sank at the sight of the boxes. They were only barrels of nails and bags of flour. But she removed her dripping boots and hung her coat on a peg. On stocking feet, she crossed the rough wooden floor and knelt beside a crate. Please, open it, the man urged. Slowly, Lucy put her hand into the box and pulled out an object wrapped in tissue. Round and heavy, it almost slipped through her fingers. Lucy trembled a little as she unwrapped it. So like even the even the dog's pretty curious about what we've got wrapped up in here. It was a glass jar. Lucy gave the man a puzzled look. Go on, his nod said. So she unpacked another glass jar and another and another until she was completely surrounded by jars of all shapes and sizes, tall and thin, round and squat, jars with lids and jars without. Now the man said for something to put inside. And he pulled over a huge crate stamped with a strange word. Looks like it says, confections. As Lucy unpacked, her eyes lit up. It was candy, her favorite candy, gumdrops. Try some, the man said. She popped one in her mouth. Now she could hardly unwrap fast enough. Peppermint sticks, taffy, lollipops, chewing gum. Wide-eyed, she looked at the man. We wish, Lucy said. Yes, I know, said the man, and here it is. Welcome to Sunniman's Candy Store. I am John Sunniman. 
and everybody's everybody's pretty excited about the candy so we'll see how the rest of the people feel about it soon the small store was filled with candies gleaming in their glass jars raspberry suckers and tiny lemon drops brightly colored jawbreakers and long tangles of licorice pink and white peppermints for church and butterscotch balls for company then in the very last package in the very last crate was a candy Lucy had never seen before. A red and white striped candy stick with a crook on the end. What is this? Lucy asked. This, Mr. Sunman explained, is a candy cane. It's a very special Christmas candy. Why? Lucy asked. Tell me, Mr. Sunman said. What letter does it look like? Lucy took the candy and turned it in her hand. J, she said. Yes, Mr. Sunman smiled. J is for Jesus, who is born on Christmas Day. I think we can all take a guess who that might be. Now, turn it over. What does it remind you of? Lucy turned the candy, can candy in her hand. She peered down intently. I know, she finally said. It looks like a shepherd's staff. Who were the first to find out about Jesus' birth, Mr. Sunman asked. Shepherds in the field, Lucy answered, watching over their flocks by night. But Mr. Sunman, what are the stripes for, Lucy asked. The man's eyes grew sad. The prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. Before he died on the cross, Jesus was whipped. He bled terribly. The red reminds us of his suffering and his blood. But then Mr. Sunman continued, the candy is white as well. When we give our lives to Jesus, his blood washes away our sins, making us white and pure as the snow. That, he said, is the story of the candy cane. Is it a secret, Lucy asked. Mr. Solomon looked at her for a long moment. It's a story that needs to be told, he said. Will you help me share it? It was now the depths of December. The town was whipped round by blizzard winds. For days the sun hid itself. But every morning, Mr. Solomon and Lucy ventured out. They wore heavy woolen co coats and bright hand-knit scarves, and in their stiff, mittened fingers they each held a bag. They went to every house in town, they traveled to every farm in the country, they knocked on every door, in every home they told a story, they left a small gift, and they gave an invitation. There they are, out in the cold of winter. On the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun finally broke through the clouds and Sonneman's candy store officially opened. The mayor came feeling better than he'd felt in days. The young wives came dressed in beautiful smiles. The farmers came eager to trade grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wish had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store, but they shared something more, something bigger, something better. On that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane they told the miracle of Christ's birth, the misery of his death, and the mercy of his love. And that is the history of the candy cane. So that's a pretty cool story, uh, a pretty great Christmas story, um, and uh, one that is uh, pretty inspirational. I would say that the cover is true, the inspirational story of our favorite Christmas candy. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed that book and, and it, its message and, and what it's really all about and really what uh, what Christmas is all about too. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty special and pretty meaningful. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I've enjoyed reading it and we'll see you guys all again soon.